Today I invite you to create a Halloween decoration with me. It is going to be quite a large project which will consist of three steps. And the first one is to decorate the background. For that I got out all my embossing folders, went through them, uh, discarded the ones that were too grungy, too steampunky. Also didn't take the ones that were too cute and lacy and I was left with these embossing folders with numbers, with chess figures, uh, with typewriter letters and with texts. And I will be embossing a pile of papers with these embossing folders and gluing them to the background using a liquid gel medium. I did not record that part, but I was cutting the embossed papers in smaller pieces and gluing them randomly on this white big piece of cardboard. The whole idea behind this decoration, behind this project is to create a metallic look. I wanted a Halloween decoration, but not exactly, you know, purple and green and spooky. I wanted it to be rich, beautiful, metallic, golden. At least that's the idea and we'll see how it goes. Here are all the papers glued down to the background cardboard. Bear with me, I know it looks ugly and it will get even uglier. In my head the each piece of paper is like a little metal plate and I wanted to give an impression that they are screwed down to the background using screws or little brads. And for that I'm using um, Nouveau Drops, which I got when I was subscribing to Tonic monthly crafting kits a long time ago. And I took the color which I never use. It's this bright, bright pink red color. And I'm imitating the little darts. And after that, the whole background needs to dry until tomorrow. And as I said, please do not laugh. I know it looks funny at the moment. <laughs> The next day, when the little droplets are dry, I'm ready to paint and I'm using black gesso that could have been also a black acrylic paint, but I've decided to go with gesso and I'm covering everything in a black layer and as you see, it's starting to look better already. And then a little tragedy struck, I've lost the recording of dry brushing a gold color on top of this black, but it's a very traditional technique. Dry brushing brings out all the details and you will see it when we will go back to the background. But while the background is drying, let's work on the decoration. And for that I'm using these big bugs by All and Create, which luckily come with dyes. I am being very careful about how I place my paper, because I will need to come back to the stamping platform again. Yes, I, in my head, did some planning what needs to happen next. And I'm using archival ink to stamp all the four bugs at the same time. I am not too worried about the quality of stamping because, as I said, I will come back. And as you see, the bug in the bottom there didn't stamp very well, but I will not repeat the stamping for now. I will be coloring the bugs and for that there is enough black lines on the paper. I will be using traditional Halloween colors like orange, purple, green, and I will be using, of course, my favorite method of coloring, which is colored pencils. I will color the first bug, which will be this orangey bug. And then I quickly do the other ones and come back. I am not being very precious about the coloring because these images will go back into the stamping platform and I will stamp over the coloring again. 
So as long as there is some color on the bugs, I'm happy. I am finishing with the blue bug and I'm getting rid of the pencils and suddenly, you will see, suddenly there are bugs everywhere all over my table Ooh, spooky! But that is because I needed a lot of bugs so I repeated this process behind the scenes four or five times I think so the bugs go back in the stamping platform. I'm trying to very carefully place the paper where it was. And I will be stamping again, this time using embossing ink. And then I will be embossing the bugs using black embossing powder. I wanted to do it to slightly calm down the brightness and the happiness and the childishness of the coloring. I wanted the bugs to look more serious, more in line with, you know, the metallic look of the whole project. And when the embossing is done, all that's left to do is to use dies to cut the bugs out. I had to run them through the cutting machine two or even three times because the embossing slightly impedes on cutting but I managed to do it and here they all are <laughs> don't they look gorgeous? they still look a little bit like candy but it's time for the next step so let's get rid of the bugs and on to the gel printing I am using gel printing to prepare my papers because I want to cut out leaves and for that I got out another product which has been standing there in my shelves for a long time without being used and those are metallic inks but these are water-based inks so what I'm hoping is that they will bead up as all the water-based products on my plate and this by the way is not a gel plate, this is a silicone plate and you see exactly, they are doing what they are supposed to do. They are beading up, they are creating patterns on their own. So the color becomes alive on the plate. I need to let it dry. Yes, it is dry now. And now I can cover it with acrylic paint. And I'm using transparent acrylic paints, but again metallic pink paints. Because I am going for this metallic look. And because I use the copper ink for the first layer, I'm lifting it using golden ink to have a little bit of contrast. And these are set upters, transparent acrylic paints, which I absolutely adore. And you do see how transparent they are. The layer is barely visible. And I'm using black cardboard to lift them. Not only because metallic paints look gorgeous on a black background, because I want the leaves to be dimensional and I don't want the white paper to show. I think that the black will go very well and let the leaves blend in with the background. Oh, no, let's try and lift it. That's enough caressing the paper did to lift it. We want to see what's underneath there. Yeah. See how gorgeous it is. Yay! All those little lines and beads of copper color underneath. Gorgeous! And this is not a gel printing video, so I wasn't going to show how I make all the papers, but just because it is so gorgeous, let's have a look at one more. Okay, so again the copper and brass inks go on the plate, 
See how they behave on the plate. Ooh. Then I let all of that dry patiently, patiently. Cover it with gold paint. And lift everything using black cardstock. Just a moment of patience. I want the paint really to soak into the paper. No, let's wait a little bit more. <laughs> not to love gel printing. Do you see that? Oh. Okay, I will repeat this process again four or five times because I need a lot of paper to cut out all the leaves. But I will add a little photo, close-up photo of how the copper lines look. And to cut the leaves I will be using this absolutely gorgeous Sizzix dye. As soon as I saw it I needed to get it. Uh, those tattered leaves are so unusual. I think that this is my all-time favorite Sizzix dye, if not all-time favorite dye of all the dyes. And they are big, generous, generously sized, so absolutely wonderful. See how gorgeous they look when cut out of this golden paper. But I'm going to work on them some more. I want to uh, get rid of this uh, freshness of the leaves, the, the raw surface of the leaves, you could say. So I'm going, going around the holes in the leaves with black marker. And I'm going doing it very haphazardly. It doesn't need to be precise and beautiful. I want it to look a little bit, um, uh, you know, aged. And if we compare the leaves, you see the difference. They look more um, realistic, more alive with the black color. And again, I will go and do that to all the leaves. And then I'm getting out my leaf pattern embossing uh, folder. I think it's again by Sizzix. I'm using a lot of Sizzix products today <laughs> for some reason. And this is... Um, embossing folder which reminds of a cabbage leaf. There are a lot of lot of tiny uh, veins and I love what it does to the leaves. See that? See that? It looks like somebody has really used a tiny hammer to hammer out this uh, thin leaf out of sheet of metal. I'm absolutely loving this. I'm absolutely loving this. And if you don't have this folder, of course, you can use any folder you have. Uh, here on one leaf, just for comparison, I used um, a spider web embossing powder that also gives some life to the leaf and added interest. And here they all are. And they feel even heavy. Uh, it's difficult to explain, but they feel like made from metal. And this embossing powder, which has tiny little details, has done something interesting to the paper. The paper has become easy to bend. As I said, it does feel like metal. I bend it and it stays in shape easily. So I can easily add some dimension to the leaves. Oh, I'm so happy at this stage about how they look and how they are turning out. Okay, that's leaves done. That's our bugs done. We can get back our background 
and start creating. Here is the background. I, as I said, covered it with um, gold and copper paint, imitating some plates being made from one metal, some from other. And now I'm just placing the leaves to make a crown, a wreath, to make a wreath on my background. And I'm placing bugs in, in between, which look like jewels, but if you look closer, those are bugs. So that's the Halloween touch to this wreath. And yes, I know that the traditional way of doing mixed media pieces like this is to glue everything uh, onto the background and then start to paint background and the foreground together, focal points together with the background and dry brushing them together. But somehow I had this feeling that it might work also this way. Um, the more I'm putting it together, the more I fall in love with it and I love the look. The only doubt I started to have was, since I used the cutting dies, the bugs have a white outline and at the beginning I thought that I'm fine with it, but now I don't like it. So I went over the bugs, I experimented either with black marker, but then the bugs disappear. And I decided to use a little bit, just tiny bit of gold paint and just touch the whitest areas of the bug. This way I think the bugs do not disappear, but they also are not cartoonishly white. And here it is. I love it. If I may say so myself, I love it. I decided to add the final touch, which is some uh, turquoise platters. As always, the close-up photos of this project will be in our Big Fat Mixed Media Tribe Facebook group. Do come join us there. And if this inspired you to create something similar, use hashtag Big Fat Mixed Media Tribe so that we can find it and admire it. And I see you soon in the next episode. All that's left to do is to put the decoration where it is supposed to be.